Oh shit. <laughs> Man. I have no audio of him just mantling up. It sounded like he was below me. what's going on youtube in today's video we're going to go over the best graphic settings for amd gpus and cpus for warzone season 2 reloaded and there is a new setting that improves responsiveness and reduces latency that's included in the game let's get into it all right so first up we're going to go over the best windows settings so to do this we go into our search bar and we're going to type game mode and then we go into game mode settings in here we're going to make sure game mode is turned on we make sure game mode is turned on Next, we're going to go to related settings and click on graphics. Once we're in here, we're going to go change default graphics settings and make sure our default high performance GPU is selected to your current graphics card, which is my 7900 XTX. That's the one you want selected, whatever your graphics card is. Make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on. Variable refresh rate is turned on. Optimize windows uh, for optimizations for window games is turned on. And then we can go back into this arrow tab here and we're all done. Next, we're going to go and search our list and add in Call of Duty here. You should see it down here somewhere. Um, if it's not in here, you can add in games by going to this Browse tab here and finding your game and then adding it in. And then once you're in there, you're going to find it to go Options and select High Performance when this is in your graphics preference. High Performance, make sure that's selected, hit Save. And then you're done. You can close out of that one. All right, next, we're going to go back into our search. We're going to type Updates. We're going to check for Windows updates. Make sure that this is green and ticked and you are all up to date with your current Windows update. If you need to, click check for updates. Let it run its thing and make sure it is up to date because sometimes what happens is your graphics card and CPU uh, need an update from Windows to work uh, the best and optimize well uh, with Windows. So make sure that's up to date. Once you're done, close that one and you're all done there. Right, next we're going to jump into the in-game settings where Call of Duty has added in a brand new AMD setting to reduce latency and improve responsiveness. Let's get into those right now. Right now they're in the game. We're going to our settings cog up here on the top right side. We're going to go into our graphic settings to start with. Let's get straight into it. And display, make sure display mode is selected to either full screen exclusive or full screen borderless. Either one, uh, if you have multiple monitors, borderless is going to be better because it means you can go over and left and right or wherever your other monitor is and you're not going to have to tab out. If you want the lowest possible latency, go full screen exclusive, but it's not going to make too much difference. You will not notice it up on borderless. If you need to go over full screen exclusive, do display monitor, make sure that is your uh, current monitor that you have. For me, it's this 27-inch uh, uh, 240 hertz monitor I have here. Make sure that's selected. Display adapter is going to be your graphics card. Make sure that is your current graphics card selected. Mine is 7900 XTX. Screen refresh rate makes it set to the highest possible or auto. For me, like I said, 240 hertz is mine. And display resolution if you're playing 1440p. Make sure that's the highest. If you're playing 1080p, make sure that's the highest as well. Auto should tell you which one that is. Aspect ratio. Make sure that is set to automatic. Uh, restart shaders. You can do this if you wish. This just restarts your shaders, which we all know what that does after every season. Display gamma. Make sure it's set to 2.2. Gamma brightness. I have mine set to 55. Manage this based on your monitor uh, and just as required. This is the brand new setting right here, the AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2. Now this AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 reduces system latency for improved responsiveness. Now I believe this is what would combat um, NVIDIA's low reflex latency. Obviously we want you know, to reduce latency and improve responsive. That's what we want in this game, it's competitive. We want those quicker times uh, to and you know, obviously less latency. So make sure you turn this on. I did run some tests as you can see on screen right now. Uh, I couldn't see too much difference, maybe a little bit of difference in, um, in the timings there. Uh, however, you know, just play around with it. It's still a brand new feature into the season. So we'll see how we go with this one moving forward. Uh, sustainability, these we haven't touched too, ma too much. Custom frame rate, you can change this to unlimited or if you wish to, you can set this to custom and set it to your monitor's refresh rate or you can set it to a few notches just a little bit lower than what you're getting in terms of FPS. I like to just have it on unlimited so I don't really mind that. Uh, reduce menu, render resolution, set to native. Pause game rendering off. 
reduce quality when inactive off, focus mode at zero, and HDR on automatic. Over to the quality tab in here, graphics preset. Once you change some settings, this will adjust to custom. However, we're going to our render resolution. We make sure this is set to 100. This is 100% of our monitor's resolution. Uh, so if you're on a 1080, you should still have this set to 100 as well. Dynamic resolution, we make sure we have this turned off. The best sharpening tool still currently is Fidelity CAS. We have that set to 95. Uh, AMD FSR 3 frame generation, turn this rubbish off. This will give you insane amounts of input latency. I don't care what you say in the comments. I don't care what you uh, think you know. This gives you input latency. Do not use AMD FSR 3 frame generation. You will get, yes, double the amount of frames in game. They are fake frames. Do not use this uh, setting whatsoever. VRAM scale target, we have to set to 65. Variable rate shading, make sure we turn this one on. This will give you more frames as well. Now, these are the, the settings I currently use. However, you may need to adjust these based on your GPU and CPU. Texture resolution, you can set this to, uh, once again, if you have a lower end GPU, set, or want to play more competitively, set this to low or very low. I normally have it set to normal. I don't know why I was on low. Texture filter, and eostropic. Once again, play around with this. If you have a lower GPU, you can set this to lower. I normally play on normal as well with this one, but have a play around with it. Uh, for me, this is obviously an AMD flagship PC. Normal is fine. I can probably turn these up if I want, but I like to play more competitively. Depth of field we have turned off. Detail quality we have set to low. Particle resolution I have set to normal. Bullet impacts we have on. I prefer to see the bullet impacts. It's just a little bit immersive in game. So we have the bullet impacts turned on. Persistent effects we have turned off. Shader quality we have set to high. You can also turn this down if you want. I might put this on medium or low. As you can see on the right hand side here, um, we can't really see in this picture, but in this right one here where my camera is, you can, there's actually reflections in the water. Choose how you want to do this. I'm going to have it set to low actually. On demand texture streaming, we have set to optimize. Allow texture cache size, set it to 64 or to 32. You choose. Um, local texture streaming quality, we have set to low. Shadow quality, we set to very low. Screen space, shadows off. Occlusion and screen space lighting, we have off. Screen space reflections on normal. Static reflection quality low. Uh, tessellation set to off. Volumetric quality on low. Deferred physics quality low. Weather grid volumes low. And water quality is off. Over to the view tab. Motion reduction preset we turn off because it just gives you a basic preset for the game, which we don't want to do because we're adjusting it ourselves. Field to view, play around with this somewhere between 107 to 120. Whatever suits you best. Whatever you normally play on, don't change it all the time. Just play on one, select it, and use it. ADS field of view, we have set to affected. Weapon field of view on wide. Third person field of view at 90. Vehicle field of view on wide. World motion blur is set to off. Weapon motion blur is off. First person camera movement, at least 50. Third person, at least 50. Third person ADS transition. Third person ADS. And inverted flashbang. If you don't want a bright white light in your face, set this to on and it will give you a black one. Over to the audio tab. Now I'm running the Art is War tune. So in here, master volumes. I don't know why it's still on this for me right now. Master volumes. I have everything basically set to zero. Look at this glitch. Look at this game glitch. Let me use my controller to see if I can. There we go. Okay, my master uh, voice chat volume. <clears throat> Sorry, my master volume. Like it's glitched in this as well. Okay, my master volume. I have set gameplay music at zero, dialogue at 10. Effects volume, which is where the footsteps lay at 100, and cinematic volume at zero. Uh, into the, like I said, this audio device, I run the art tune, like I said, but my speakers, headphones, game sound could be your headset. Speak output if you're on a PC, you're probably going to be on Windows default. 7.1, I believe, is enabled with the art tune. Enhanced headphone mode, try it if you like. I don't really like it. Audio mix, I'm using Sucker Punch. You can also try Triarc Mix or Headphone Bass Boost, whichever sounds better in your ears for you based on your headset. Mono audio, we have off, mute game and optimize off. Mute license music, I have on because I stream. I don't want it. Asymmetrical hearing compensation off. And the rest of it, reduce tonight of sound. We want that one on. This uh, sound from concussion and flash grenades, shell shock is replaced with a more dull murky sound. Yes, please. And hit mark preset, whatever you like there. All right, over to voice chat. In voice chat, we have the voice chat volume set to 22. Whatever sounds better for you in your ears. Voice chat on, proxy on, body chat on, passwords on, game chat voice as all lobby. If you don't want to hear all lobby, you can set it just your friends. Um, voice chat options for your output device is going to be 
whatever your headset is, and that's where the uh, voice chat is going to output to. Microphone level, that's your microphone for yourself, so you can test that one. Uh, test, test, uh, test, 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 test. As you can see, you can see that's how it sounds to everyone in game. Microphone mode, I have one push to talk. If you want to play open mic and everyone can hear you in game, put it to open mic. Microphone input device is going to be your microphone that you have, whether it's attached to your headset or it is a standalone. Um, make sure that it's selected there. All right, over to the controller tab. My controller settings, you can play around with these yourself. I play on controller. I'm using a mouse and keyboard at the moment to go through this, but I play on a controller. Button layout, I have mine set to tactical. You probably have yours on default, whatever works for you. Sick layout preset uh, as default. Horizontal stick sensitivity, uh, play around with this. Whatever works best, 1.4, 1.2 is what I prefer. Whatever is going to make me aim better without overshooting my shots. Simplify control presets off, lower motion strain off, bumper ping off, swap RB, LB, and all that nonsense off. Controller vibration, that's just distracting when you turn that one off. Dead zone inputs, very important. We want to have our left stigmin and our right stigmin the lowest we possibly can without having too much stick drift. As you can see with mine, I have absolutely no stick drift, so I don't have to worry about that at all. So I have mine set to zero. Left stick max, we have set to 60, right stick max and 99, and two very important ones at the bottom here, left and right trigger, we have set both to zero. Into the aiming side of things, sensitivity multiplier, the only one we change here is ADS, sensitivity multiplier 0 0.85. Uh, look in version standard, aim, advanced settings. In here, you're gonna see ADS transition, uh, sensitivity transition timing, set to this to instant. Third person as assist, aim assist response turf type, as dynamic and we have the scale set to one we don't touch that one at all sensitivity per zoom i don't bother uh aim assist we want that on let's be honest ad is aim assist we have turned on as well uh more motion advanced settings i don't play around with anything in here because it's to do with more like your gyro so over to movement sprint assist we have it on tactical sprint assist sprint delay at zero sprint sideways and backwards assist we have both turned on mental assist we have turned off crouch assist we have off um, a corner slice, so I have that off as well. That's a new feature where you bend left and right. Don't want that. Slide dive behavior, you can have this set to slide only or hybrid, whichever you prefer. If you want to dive and slide, you can use hybrid. I like to just slide because I dive too much. Uh, sprint resource, I have that one on. Sp slide maintain sprint, we have a turn on as well. Movement advanced settings. In here, you want to put sprint tactical behavior on toggle. Tactical sprint activation, single tap run. And sprinting door bash, make sure that's turned on. Plunging underwater, we also want to see to free. Vehicle, well, you know, I haven't touched these ever. So moving on, combat. Aim, sight, behavior, hold, tactical stance on toggle, tactical stance activation, ADS plus down button, weapon mount activation. Some of these are going to be preference for you. Body shield, finishing move, behavior. I like it on the body shield because it's just funny. Armor plate, apply all. C4 detonation one by one. Equipment behaviors, hold, manual fire, press, Combat advanced settings in here, not too much. Make sure sprint cancels reload is turned off. Gun behavior is also stuck to independent. And depleted weapon ammo switch, we want that on because it switches my gun when I run out of bullets. I think that is everything for in here. And we're going to go over to the interface tab over here. We're going to make sure uh, our skin reduction movie is turned on because we don't want that at the beginning of every single game. Telemetry, if you're on a uh, if you're on PC or console, actually you can turn some of these on to see at the top left side of your corner what is showing there um in readability what do we got color customization click on that one in here we're going to have the set to color filter filter to color filter target set to both and the world intensity color intensity or at 100 you can choose these colors based on whatever you want to do for yourself here but make sure color filter 2 is on and filter targets on both then your game will pop more in color gameplay hud mini map square um too many people still running a circle Put this on square, minimap rotation on. Um, crosshairs, make sure it's turned on. I have mine set to larger as well and a crosshair dot on. You can change your crosshair color to whatever you want. I currently have mine as the Scion blue color, which I prefer. Hit, hit marker visuals also turned on. Right, from here, we're going to go over to the AMD Radeon software and we're going to go through that real quick. Nothing new in there, but we will run over for anybody new to the video. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are in the AMD Radeon software. First thing we're going to do is go check for updates and make sure our software and our driver is currently up to date. As you can see, mine is up to date as of, as of today, which is the 25th of the 2nd on the current version 24.12.1. 
in here we're going to go over to our gaming tab and we will see call of duty right here you're going to click on call of duty now call of duty modern warfare 2 is the current one the same as warzone so if you want to change these settings just for call of duty then you can change these settings right here in this screen for myself i use these for all games so i'm going to go over to global gaming experience all right so in here we're going to run through these real quick as i said i haven't changed these since the last video here we go randy radio on super resolution off fluid motion frames off anti-lag we make sure that is turned on this is reduces input lag we like that radio on boost we have this turned off radio on chill off image sharpening off because we use the in-game uh fidelity cast video scale upscale off radio on enhanced sync disabled wait for vertical refresh rate or as always off frame rate target control disabled anti-aliasing we have used application settings aliasing method we use multi-sampling morphological aliasing we have disabled any seotropic filtering we have enabled and set to six times for our filtering level you can change this down if you need to for uh different texture qualities uh if you can go higher the better extra filtering quality on standard you can set this to performance it's a balance in between standard uh performance will give you obviously better performance but not too much to really notice or worry about surface format optimization disabled tessellation mode as user application settings open gl buffering disabled 10 big pixel format disabled and you can restart your shaders if you wish to over to the performance tab up the top here we're going to go into tuning in here amd smart access memory we make sure just turn on if you have an amg gpu and cpu that is compatible with this um software here with this piece of tech we make sure smart access memory is on to give us a massive boost in frames that's very very important right next we're going to our little settings cog up the top on the right here and we're going into display and In display we're going to change our custom color make sure custom color is turned on and our color temperature control is also enabled color temperature we have at 6500 i believe that's default brightness hue and contrast are all default as well saturation we have that increase just slightly to bring out the more colors to about 125 so based on your monitor make sure you set that one at uh however it looks best for you to your eyes and to your game so set that to roughly 125 increase it for more colors basically custom resolutions don't worry about that overrides don't worry about that nothing else here is too different display options actually over here on the left hand side free sync not supported that's fine if it is you can play around with free sync some vir vrr technology super resolution as disabled, disabled gpu scaling scaling mode integer all off uh, color depth we have this set to 8 bc or you can try 10 BC, bpc if you can pixel format we do want to set this to rgb 4 by 4 by 4 that's going to be the best one that's full rgb and display color enhancement disabled and that is basically everything for this video if you enjoyed today's video please make sure to like and subscribe hit the bell notification to be notified of content uploads and live streams we'll see you on the next one